You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, Trabaye, tell us about it. Um, Trabaye is like my most recent single. Yeah. Um, I made it sometime last year with my brother, who is also my producer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're just playing around, and we made something about song Trabaye about Trabaye then. I must, I must say it's a good song. I, you know, the sh for the short while we played, I enjoyed it. Oh, I probably you. would give it more time later on on my Spotify. Oh. But until then, you, your brother is your producer. Yeah. You are Royce, the son of the very popular um, Ebenezer Obey. Yes. Uh, what does it feel like, you know, having this family that is doing music? Uh, I, I'm not going to talk about you and your father's, you know, mm -hmm. riding on his shadow or all that. We'll probably get to that later on on the interview. But you have this, you know, really strong background in music. How has that affected you doing your stuff? Um, yeah, to be honest, yeah, uh, it, basically I started really young. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I had time to like see how they do their own stuff. And, because we had, our genres of music are totally different. But I had time to like see how they, because it's also still entertainment as well. Mm -hmm. So I had time to see how they do their own stuff and all. So yeah, it has, I would say it has shaped who I am today as an artist. I've okay. like learned one or two from them, obviously. <laughs> all right. All right, so um, let me ask you, um, I want to go a little deep into your background. Oh. You said you started music early. What, what age did you start music? Um, professionally. Yeah. Professionally, I started singing like 2016. 2016. Mm. So you discovered yourself professionally in 2016. Yeah, I've been making writing songs ever since, but like professionally, like oh, releasing music as an artist. Yeah, Please prove me wrong. Tell me you didn't start from the church. No, I didn't start from the church. Good, because you know all the music <laughs> I used to tell you. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing music since I was born. No, I was in no, church. No, but it's good to you know have a breath of fresh air. Okay, but so <laughs> let's talk about um, you know how how you started because mm -hmm. you said professionally you discovered yourself in 2016, but yeah. apparently you know you've always had music around you. Judging yes. from you know that daddy was doing yeah. music and you all you watched him you know while growing up oh. uh, all, all, you know having him in the house what was it like and has his uh you know influence yeah. affected mm -hmm. your music hmm. yes 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 um yes, how would i put it then then i used to want to write songs in that mm. but it's not my thing it's not my I then, so uh, whenever I, whatever I hear him sing, all those kind of, I always because he made he made beautiful songs. He did. Even regardless of the genre, like mm -hmm. were beautiful. You know, music is like universal language. You don't have to understand mm -hmm. what they're saying before you. So like, I always wanted to write songs like that, but <laughs> no, 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 no. I that's why I just I just had to look up and decide, like I said earlier, me I'm the Jay Z Ebenezer of Do you get? I just had to like. Mm. You know, <laughs> get into all of that <laughs> makes sense. You all don't right. have to, yeah. Go on, all right. Please. So, um, I would like to ask you, um, we understand you, you came from that kind of background, you know, solid background from mm -hmm. your grandfather, right? Um, how does it feel like you know, people getting to know that you are the grandson of that very huge personality? That's one, then two. How, how was it like for you breaking out of that shell? Mm. and doing your thing was it was it something that really came easy for you wow. it's a two in one question so. yeah um for the breaking out part it's tough because the name can either make you or break you at the same time because mm. everybody expects a lot from you because they're like the grandson exactly, of exactly that's, what, that's what i want you to say but like i'll I try as much as possible not to tell people that I'm a grandson. Mm. <laughs> That's why even my stage name is very different from mm. and it's not any it's Royce LK. I could have used Royce Obey yeah. to make them just know that oh I'm the grandson of you. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't it's when they now get to know me better like, ah because in some places that you want to like do so, stuff yourself, like do you understand? They, there's this you get they can they can they can even charge you more than a normal person exactly. because they're the grass you, you and do you understand exactly those kind of stuff so <coughs> me personally i don't really tell people 
than from now, unless people are close to me. Ah, I don't tell people about that. I just let them know that oh, right. I sing and I'm voice. Uh, we'll take the conversation further from where it is right now. When we come back from this quick break, we'll be talking about your previous projects, the yeah. recent ones, and you know where you're taking it from here. But don't go anywhere. Royce is still with us in the studio. We'll return after this break. Stay with us. It is still Ibaran TV Day break, and we still have Royce in the studio with us. He's telling us about his, you know, music and how he started. You, you mentioned that you know you've been doing music for a very long time before you professionally, you know, yes. started doing stuff. When was the first time you ever wrote a song? Can you remember? Yeah, uh, I was in GS2. Oh, wow! When I wrote my first song, because I wanted to be so to be part of this team so bad, <laughs> um, so I had to just prove myself. Oh. And I wrote the first song, and I discovered it was mad. It was good. <laughs> it was good. It was, they loved it. So they're like, ah, we be our singer, come and sing for us. Because uh, it was like a group of rappers, but they needed someone to sing. So that's then they came up with the name Rap Dynamite. Mm. So I was a singer in the Where was this? Is this Lagos? No, no, it's called in Ogun State. Okay. So uh, that's how I became <laughs> the singer <laughs> of, the, of the clique. Oh. Then. At first, I, I, I wrote one song, and that's fine. Yeah. But I then discovered I have to. And I bring more songs now. And did you uh, come easy? Funnily <laughs> enough, it came easy. Oh, nice. I didn't have to force it. I was just, uh, that's when I, uh, I think this thing is, is my, yeah, right? yeah. Nice. Oh, good. OK, so let's talk about your EP. You, you dropped an EP in 2021, am yes. I correct? Yes. Uh, tell us about it. How, what was the inspiration behind it? And you, know, you mm. named it. Why did you name it? What you named it? And you know, how mm. is it doing currently? Um, the EP, uh, I recorded it like a year before it re I released it. Mm. I recorded the whole EP like a year before. I kept it. I was just, you know, you have to. Because music is not cheap, you have to work on promotion and all the stuff for you to put out music. So I just kept it and praying to God that when this will come so I can push my stuff and all. So but, uh, the EP was just, at that point, yeah, my, like I said, my younger brother is my producer as well. So he just discovered he can make beat as well too. So we we're always just working and working and like, why not just put all the stuff we've made together okay. and like, and when we finish, we just realize that it's different. Like the songs that, if, if you listen from the first track to the, the first track was the f song I wrote in SS2. I just said, that song is nice, let me just. And it was really good when I recorded wow. it. So, and if you listen to the tracks, you see that from track one to the last track, they are all different, they, they give different feelings. So I just, it doesn't need to be classic because it's, it was really classic then to me. Okay, let me get your honest opinion. Hmm. We will return to um, Royce as an individual artist. Okay. But let's look at the Nigerian music industry. Yeah. Uh, there's been talks on the street that songs these days know they to last. Hmm. So that an artist drops a song, is banging, everybody's jamming to it. And hmm. in three weeks, Beautiful. one month. I like the fact that you said that. Cause it's gone. How do you react to that? That is also what led to me naming the song classic because recording a song a year ago yeah. and still listening to it and it just makes sense yeah i don't know this is, this is a classic <laughs> <laughs> so yeah like, uh i feel like basically it's because most people just they don't really care about the song anymore it's just the beats mm. i've done some people i don't want to so you get some people just okay i like a half an hour as a producer send me beats once the beat is very good they just do small something on it and is the beat now? Nah, it's even it's even the beat people want to hear. So sure. once the beat is groovy, piano yeah, 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 yeah. Do you understand? So <laughs> they, they don't pay much attention to the contents that they're saying on the beat. So that's I think that's where the problem is coming from. All right. So let me ask you: um, What are those ingredients or elements you infuse into your songs that mm. makes it look a generational kind of song that makes it last for as mm. long as you would want it? What are those things you pay attention to? Um, one thing I realized is the fact that the way they make they make music back then mm. is more genuine like the way than the way I don't know make music now. So I tried my best to it affected me because when I played my songs for my friends back then they were saying you sound it's giving this kind of old school vibes. Mm. But I just I just fused that into my song because 
is is um is what's making me different from others mm -hmm. is and as well as that's like what i'm making them oh i'm from this family so i try my best like maybe the conga this i try my to just put it there to just oh Oh, this so guy is really old school uh, spice. You yes, actually yes, teach yes, your music, yes, you know, yes, on yes, top. Yes. Now, yes. let me ask you: Has it been? I'm still going back to your background. Sorry about that, but I just want to hit a little hard about that. Yeah. Um, looking at the fact that you don't want to let people know that you're from that background of Ebenezer or Bay. Mm. When it comes to um, your productions, I'm yeah. talking about you sponsoring it yourself. Has yeah. it been for you? Uh, Since you don't let people know I am a son yes. of Ebenezer Obe, so that they don't charge you. Yes, as so yeah. does did it did it go down well with you? Yeah, yeah. To be honest, if I'm being fair, yeah. there are some places that oh they will discover that I'm, and things will just work really smooth for me. I'm not like, uh -huh. but there are some places that ah they say no ah you be daddy ah just you understand those kind of things. So it has not been easy to be honest, but. Uh, grand, my grandfather has been supportive. Yeah, uh, I play, he listens to my songs most time. Yeah, I think on my EP, his favorite is Owen because that one has that spice of his type of music, mm. and it's also relating to the new school. So he listens. Just ah, you know, any new music, play, come and play for me now, and I'll play some songs for him. And ah, this one, I like this one. No? All yeah. right. <laughs> All right. So does he? Is it part of your mentors when it comes to music? Or definitely, definitely. Is it, is part of your mentors. So, what support has he given aside from listening to your songs and giving you good remarks? What other thing does he do for you just to make your music look so good? Because he has more experience than yes, you. Yes, yes. So, tell us about I feel that. Um, what I cherish more about is the, I think, is the advice. Because hmm. getting advice from someone that's that big and that's been in the industry for long I, I i hold those advices so hard because i know he's of, he has more experience than me like you said so mm. he's what he because he has some really good advice that he gives me and I say, okay this thing don't do it this way because in the future and and he knows how to tell stories he always has a story for everything i hope you also include <laughs> that to your lyrics too storytelling <laughs> yes yes because i know of an artist who does that very well he tells stories yeah. when he sings so it would be like back then in my time we don't do this this this, this uh, oh. okay so i is i the advice are the best the best i think uh information i get from me all right, uh, let's bring it back to, let's take it away from Ebenezer Obe, great man, actually. Uh, but let's bring it personally now to Royce. You're doing your own thing. You found, you've found your parts and you're charting it. You keep moving forward in it. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, how do you see yourself performance-wise? Are you a, a stage person or, you know, more of studio recording and coming outside? Mm. And do, you know, there's a difference. Yeah. And, you know, we've not seen a lot of that. It, only a few Nigerian artists have been able to give us, you know, amazing stage performances mm. and they nail it every time. Do you see yourself in that league? Um, yes, I consider myself as a good performer. Like I said earlier, I, what, what I've seen mm. has shaped who I am. So, uh, by the, the, then they can perform for like three hours five hours straight True. you know these days max maybe two hours mm -hmm. like if it's your own show but if you invite you to 30 minutes you've gone you've done your <laughs> stuff so i've i've learned the just say the yeah the the way to manage the performance like the way to not get tired mm. for that long and all those stuff so i've learned that from my grandfather exactly. and my dad as well because my dad is also into music okay. yes i can so almost point at that yeah yeah it's he sings woman well, like he's into that juju music mm -hmm. that was same as my granddad. Okay. So uh I saw people not from them. All oh, right, quickly, because ah, okay. we're we're pressed for time. Yeah. Okay, just before I let you go. Okay. Um what should we be expecting from Royce and your music, Chabaye? Is yeah. it out on all platforms? Yeah, definitely. Out on all platforms. Okay, good. It's good we'll put that out there so that people can be copying it. But what what are we expecting from Royce after Chabaye? From here and now. Yeah, basically, uh, right now, I has, I dropped away last year. Okay. So I'm like doing like a rebranding on myself. I like because I realize that the music is not it gets. I love the fact that there's no attention on Afro beats. Mm. So you can't drop crap anymore. You have to drop something really good 
good content. So I'm also working on myself as an artist so I can be on that standard. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Royce. What, what are your handles? Social media, Instagram, Twitter? Um, yeah, Instagram and Twitter. I am underscore Royce LK. Same as Instagram, same with Twitter. Are you not on Facebook? No, I'm on Facebook. All right. So follow him on all his social media platforms on Instagram and on Twitter. His music, Chabaye, is on all music platforms out there. Uh, Spotify, AudioMark, wherever, whatever platform it is that you use or you're on. Please stream Chabaye. If you can, pay for it. It's not plenty money. It's not up to 100 naira. <laughs> Buy that music and support this young man doing amazing stuff. It is still Ibran TV Day Break. We have another guest coming in after this quick break. So do not go anywhere. It's uh, Bumper Stumper Package today. Stay with us. <laughs>